leave that backyard set where it belongs. Hi, my name is Dean Shoppy. I'm ranked number two in the United States currently in men's doubles, and I'm here today with Mr. Tarek Wadud, the U.S. men's national singles champion and the U.S. men's national coach. Hi, Tarek. Hi, Dean. On this tape, we're going to cover all of the basics and some of the advanced parts of badminton, strategies, tactics, footwork, stroke, and the like. Welcome to Badminton, winning fundamentals with Dean Shoppy and Tarek Wadud. Badminton is one of the fastest sports in the world. A good player can hit the shuttle in excess of 200 miles per hour. However, the shuttle slows down to under 100 miles per hour in the time it takes to cross the net, allowing the opposing player a good chance to return the shot. With the shuttle crossing the net faster than once a second, badminton, at the upper levels, more than other racket sports, is a game of speed strength and agility. A match is played two out of three games and can take as long as an hour and a half. The techniques put forward on this tape are the fundamentals of winning badminton. Hold your hand open, pointing your thumb straight up. Grip the racket, tighter with your bottom three fingers, and more loose with your thumb and index finger as you would pull a trigger. The proper grip will make a V shape in line with the head of the racket. This will allow you to pronate your forearm. The overhead stroke encompasses most shots. To learn the overhead strokes, first we will start with a soccer toss motion. Make sure that your feet and shoulders are facing forward. Place both hands behind your head as if you are scratching your back with your racket. Now swing both arms forward. At the highest point, the racket face is parallel to your body. It is also at this point where you will contact the shuttle. When hitting an overhead stroke, you must turn your body and shoulders to achieve power. Locate a line or some other mark on the floor. Place your racket foot on this line and keep your non-racket arm up for balance. This is the position, with your shoulders perpendicular to the shuttle, that all overhead shots will be hit from. To build the stroke and footwork from the hitting position, place your weight on your racket foot and lift the other foot off the ground. Jump vertically and land on your non-racket foot with your shoulders parallel to the line. Remember, the non-racket arm stays up for balance and the back leg is slightly bent. Now we will 
incorporate everything we have learned so far into the switch step. From the hitting position, lift your non-racket foot off the ground, but this time as you swing, jump straight up and reverse the order of your feet. Notice that Tarek lands on his non-racket foot and his feet point away. He has rotated his body 180 degrees. Here is an example of the switch step used in a game situation. It is one of the essentials of playing good badminton. The basic idea of badminton footwork is to move from the ready position in the center of the court as quickly and efficiently as possible, hit the shuttle, and return to a position that you are able to get to the next shot. The badminton court is 22 feet long by 17 feet wide. Now it doesn't seem like a lot, but because an opponent can hit a shot to any number of those corners at any sequence at all, it becomes very, very difficult to cover the court. Yes, and the reaction time to a bird is only less than a second, and the player has to move quickly to get to the bird so it is not necessary to come back all the way to the center of the court. Right, in fact what happens is, because you're moving from corner to corner as quickly as you can, you can't come back to the center because to come back to the center would actually require almost having a third step. Generally you have about two and a half steps to any one corner. And you have to stop somewhere before your opponent hits the bird so that you can go to the next corner. From the center of the court, your feet are spread shoulder width. Your racket foot is slightly in front and your weight is on your toes. Your racket arm is up and in front of you. You should feel relaxed and ready to move. From the ready position, follow the shuttle with your racket, turning your upper body towards the corner. Then lifting your racket foot off the ground, pivot and jump backwards on your non-racket foot. Then jump off your racket foot and strike the shuttle while switching your feet. After you land, you are in a position to step forward into the center of the court. Do we use backhands like we used to use them as a exact equal to the forehand only from that side of the court or has badminton progressed away from the backhand? I think it has progressed away as even the last decade when you see the players, most of the players are going more and more to the overhead shots because number one backhand makes them slow. When you hit the bird you can't see your opponent, you can't see the other side of the court and you don't get enough time to come back to the court 
to set for the next shot that your opponent hits it. And from your overhead shot, you can make a lot of openings for your next shot. It, you, you can create a lot of points from that corner. A shuttle hit to the forehand corner can be pursued quicker than switch stepping. Instead, a short step and jump is used. From the ready position, turn your upper torso in the direction you want to go. Take one step, then a small shuffle. Now jump towards the corner, striking the shuttle in the air and landing on both feet. To recover, jump back to ready position in the reverse of how you got there. It is most advantageous to strike the shuttle as high as possible and away from your body to allow yourself to cover the maximum distance with your arm and racket. Your first step will be with your non-racket foot. Take a medium to large step crossing slightly in front of your racket foot. Then lunge forward with your racket foot. Make sure your racket is up at all times. backhand net is done the same way, once again leading with your non-racket foot. How you'll return to the ready position is dictated by the type of shot you hit. If you redrop the shuttle, then you will need to jump back about three feet to the short service line. In this way, you will be able to control the net and still be able to get a shuttle cleared to the back court. Watch Tarek as he is able to catch the shuttle high on the net and still get shots hit to the back court. Once you have seen the fundamentals of movement to all four corners individually, shadow drills will help develop better technique. Remember to go slow at first, concentrating on proper form. This can also be done with someone pointing so that you can simulate an opponent more accurately. You find that by withholding shuttle time, and working more with, even in a classroom environment, more with um, the tennis racket or with just badminton rackets and just with, with technique type of drills and exercises that your players improve faster than they do actually hitting? Oh yes. They, they improve much faster. Technically they improve much faster. And uh, once they have to go through that phase once that phase is a little bit boring, right. but they have to go through it. Uh -huh. Once they go through that phase, then, it, then the things start going much faster. Okay. They improve technically so much faster <laughs> yes. because they know the right kind of stroke and when, when you put the bird in play, they can hit that bird and they can hit it. They immediately can, they can switch step switch instead of step. not being able to That's switch right. step, but things like that. On the other hand, if you, if you just start with the bird, then they are so much worried about the bird that their hands are coming down, they don't switch step because they are just worried to get the bird. Just over worry the about hitting the bird. One of the other things that I would, would like to emphasize, even if, if you have anything to add, you can, is that by teaching this technique and by teaching and focusing on technique in a PE class environment, you may have 40 people in your PE class and you may have only eight courts. This allows you to work with every student every single day, even if some of the students don't get to play games that day, they all benefit 
because these don't require full courts to do this stuff. And the other thing that the teachers can do is break the thing in two parts, like the underhand stroke part and the overhead stroke part. They okay. should start, start off with the underhand stroke part, where all the strokes are underhand, like the underhand serve, underhand net, because it's easier than the overhead stroke. The first drill we begin with is shuttle dribbling. The idea here is to develop good hand-eye coordination by keeping the shuttle away from your body and maintaining control of it. The single serve is primarily high and deep, designed to move your opponent to the back of the court. Your weight is on your back foot and your toe is pointing in the 2 o'clock position. Hold the shuttle by the court. Drop the shuttle in front of you and shift your weight forward as you swing through the shuttle. Keep your racket foot forward while practicing the net game. Once you have developed good technique moving to the net, a good way to practice is the shuttle toss. From the ready position, start with your non-racket foot, then lunge forward and catch the shuttle as high as possible. Once you have developed the basic stroke, to hit drops, smashes, and clears requires only a different timing and racket speed in striking the shuttle. To clear, the shuttle is hit over your head. To smash and drop, the shuttle is hit slightly in front of you with the racket head pointing downwards. To hit all overhead strokes effectively, you must be behind the shuttle with your body perpendicular to it. designed to develop a high deep clear. Player A serves to player B who clears the shuttle over the outstretched arms of the server. This is a half court drill so four players can be on the court at one time. From here we go to clears with both players switch stepping and returning to the center of the court. From here we go to the overhead drop shot. One player hits drops while the other clears the shuttle. Both players are moving their feet at all times. Practice smashing, contact the shuttle in front of you, and hit down and quick. Practice smashing using a tennis racket. This will improve your technique and power. Since the tennis racket is relatively heavy, it forces you to follow through across your body.
how regimented is, is a drill? A drill can be anything. So there is no set drills. You can do any kind of drills. You can make up your own drills and uh, to improve whatever stroke, whatever corner of your footwork or your stroke or anything that you need to improve, you can make up your own drill like. The object is to move straight up and back. After the next shot, jump back to the short service line and wait for the return. Now the same drill with a shuttle. The feeder hits a predictable pattern of clear and drops. This drill can be made more difficult by adding an option, forcing the player running to stop and wait for the next shot. This is the same drill with both players running. This is the same drill with rotating smashes. To block smashes, set with your racket foot forward and hit the shuttle in front of you. This is a two-on-one smash drill. One person smashes from the backboard. This is a two-on-one smash net drill. One person smashes and moves to the net. Notice the switch step movement and his ability to catch the shuttle high on the net. This is a two-on-one defense drill. One player is retrieving all shots without smashing or hitting overhead drops. Half-court singles encompasses all the drills outlined so far and adds an element of competition. Play a normal game of singles except use only half the court. This can also be played without smashing to emphasize consistency and accurate shot making. Doubles is a quicker game because two players can cover the court faster than one. It requires more precise shots, quick racket, and good teamwork. In the attacking positions, players play up and back and in a defensive position, side by side. Ideally, you want to force your opponents into situations in which you are hitting down and your opponents are hitting up. The serve is primarily short, and the changes from offense to defense are rapid and numerous. Because the shuttle moves quicker and is kept lower and flatter in doubles than it is in singles, there are specific drills to improve doubles. Drives. Lunges.
smash defense. The most important element in doubles is the ability to serve and serve return. You can serve either backhand or forehand. Now that you have seen the fundamentals of winning badminton, put them to use in your practice. 15 to 30 minutes per session spent on the fundamentals shown in this tape will vastly improve your play come game time. Good luck and we hope to see you on the court. This tape is a production of HL Corporation, distributors of the best in badminton including quality HL, Black Knight, and Victor products, featuring the HL Eagle 2000 and Condor synthetic shuttles and the BK line of physical education rackets for badminton, tennis, and racquetball.